Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Rehan, and now you're listening to Codev Guest. In today's episode, we have another special guest from a long way, really far from my place. <laughs> so yeah, without any further ado, let's shout out to Prabhin Kumar. Hello. Hello. Woohoo. <laughs> all right, all right. So yeah, how are you doing? Probably. I'm doing great and uh, hey Rehan, how are you? How is yeah, everything there? Good, 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 good. Thank you so much for making uh, the invitation. Really appreciate your time. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you today. <laughs> so yeah, maybe you can introduce first to our friends, our listener there. Absolutely. So, hey everyone, my name is Praveen. I'm originally from Chennai, India, currently living and working in London for a Fortune 50 company as a director of engineering. And uh, to say in a simple word, my wife is JavaScript, my girlfriend is ReactJS. I'm a complete full stack developer who works only in JavaScript stack. So that's me. And that's that's like, a. and I have a, this is my roller coaster ride. It's my 29th company here, and uh, I've been like um, working with so many, 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 many companies, many, many technologies, and but everything boils down to JavaScript. So basically, that's me, and I run my own women in tech community as well. It is not just in the UK; it is like pan world. So um, apart from this, I love teaching people a lot of things. Whatever I come to know, whatever I learn, and that is how I I am here. That is what I would say. And over to you, Rihan. All right, this is so cool. So yeah, I, I met with uh, Prapin from uh, LinkedIn. He was like, uh, got the badge of top voice on LinkedIn. It's really cool. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, before we continue to to talk about how your journey to become like getting top voice, and then uh, you also run a channel YouTube and got so many subscribers there. So yeah. I want to like know about how you progress i mean what's your uh what's your what's inspiring you to pursue career in programming how was your journey evolved this year i mean everyone, everyone has got everyone has got this interest towards something right like 90% of the people would love to play games right so interest in programming what are we doing in programming we are solving things what are we doing exactly. in games we are solving something exactly. so that's good that's the thing so this is what i am doing as well so i would say both are similar and i'm always up for solving something amazing so that's what i'm doing as well <laughs> exactly very cool so i mean do you have like a background from your family also running working with tech or something I'm the only person who is working with tech and uh, there was one person long, long ago, so long ago, who just introduced me to computers in my early second standard, we call it in India. And um, uh, I was like eight years of age when I saw DOS and other things. And then in my probably fourth or fifth standard, I started really working with computers and other things. And seems pretty good then that's when i got the hand of like oh wow computers are amazing so i'm just gonna go start rampage on like doing programming and solving something amazing or like exploring things you have like so many many programming languages which i wanted to try so that's that's how it happened a person who likes ice cream would love to explore all the flavors right it exactly. is almost the same thing <laughs> exactly yeah. yes exactly exactly so you you kind of starting from uh, university back then? Um, sorry, your question wasn't clear. Can you repeat so, it, please? So yeah, uh, can you like uh, starting your career with university or yes? So what I did is when I was in, in India, I finished my schooling. Then I started my bachelor's of engineering and computer science and engineering. That is my undergraduate program. After four years of uh, whatever you call it. I don't want to say anything in public. So people know how the education system in India is. So after the four years of engineering, I got into a big conglomerate, uh, IT conglomerate. Uh, it's from the Tata Group, Tata Consultancy Services. I started as a um, software developer, basically. and uh, But it was a research-oriented one. And uh, it was my first time when I started with a lot of 
cool things, new things I learned from the best people in the world. Like, for example, there is uh, my mentor who is from Yahoo and Amazon experience. So, and there was another mentor of mine who who had like really, really heavy experience, hefty experience from different countries. And uh, with that being said, I really fell in love with what I have been doing from, from my early ages. So even during the school times, I used to create. So have you heard of Slam Book? We used to do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. We used to get uh, uh, signatures, autographs from all our college folks, class college people. Folks. So I did something on a website while everyone were doing in papers. So that was my first uh, thing. And uh, secondly, when uh, things went really super cool. Um, so basically in the engineering side of things, I tried doing a lot of things, playing around with forums, internet forums. Back then it was like extremely good because we did not have Facebook or Orkut. We, how many of you remember Orkut? We had we never had Facebook yeah. or LinkedIn, or any kind of like social network back then, other than like Orkut was the first thing ever. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, even before that, there were nothing. So, I created websites ba basically that time. So, I created my own website, web domain names, and uh, so it was really going well. So, I, I used this website called praveentech.net and it's still with me but uh yeah i switched to praveen.science because that's how i i'm called in the internet and um so that was my first ever attempt to get into like the biggest side of um networking and stuff like that like social networking and then uh, after four years of engineering i got directly into data consultancy services as a software developer and i started with uh, um they asked me whether i want to do front end or a back end I wasn't sure about front end. That's the INE. I said, let me do back end. And then they said, like back end, it is Ruby on Rails. Okay, fine. I don't know anything about it. So let me do front end, even though I don't know much. <laughs> so I started with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then that was one of the best things, man. Seriously, I really loved how everything went on then. Um, I became so the person who was completely scared of T CSS. Now I'm like extremely happy with CSS. <laughs> Just that think. was my journey in the in India. So okay. after uh, around three years of working, I had a I had a big personal tragic loss, and I thought I should not be in India. So I and uh, when it comes to moving out of countries, it is like uh, okay, US, no guarantee for life. Uh, Canada, again, no guarantee of life because of the weather. Uh, any European country, if you take, you need to learn the local language. If you go to Germany, you need to know German. If you go to France, you need to know French. Yeah. If you go to Italy, you need to know Roman <laughs> something. <laughs> okay, whatever it is. So there are like so many different local languages that you need to know. Nope. So not going to any of the European countries. Australia, the news were like Indian students were burnt alive. I hope that is not many any more happening nowadays. But there were so many news like that. So nope. What is the other only way? Uh, English, England. So I had a kind of like a feel towards um, yeah being an Indian. Uh, London or anything related to UK seems like okay. There seems to be some kind of bond. So I said like okay fine. And second now my main major problem here is the entrance examination to go from one country to another. I will definitely fail in any entrance examinations. So I was just thinking, what should I even do? And uh, UK, they said like, you don't need to write any entrance examination. Just tell me your uh, uh, English marks in 12th standard and 10th standard. I said like 75 on 78. Okay. On top of uh, um, like, um, on top of we giving you an unconditional offer letter, we will also give you a scholarship of 3,500 pounds, which is almost like three and a half lakhs. That was more than my entire year's salary, gross salary than uh, what I was earning. So I said like, yeah, okay, super, awesome. I'm fine, I'm done. And then no entrance examinations, right? Nothing needs to be tested or something, no, nope, nothing. So you are, you are just free, free to pay the fees and then come and join. So that's what happened. I came like 20 days before and uh, explored the city of Leicester, which was like a mini India. So I was born and brought up in South India. So we have this, uh, we don't use Hindi much. Probably we will never use Hindi in our life. Uh, but some 
those people are still saying that Hindi is the national language. You would go learn your history 101 or even talk to, uh, look at the Indian constitution or whatever, like rant, rant, complete rant. Okay, fine. Um, so uh, I, I know only Tamil, Telugu mm. and English. And when I came to Leicester, there were like certain parts of the UK that says in Tamil, that was written in Tamil. I was like, wow, wait, what? Did I, did I just come to my own place again? So to be honest, my own place, it was like the same place where I was born and brought up, but with an air condition. <laughs> it's a complete AC, like it's so cold. And uh, it now my operating temperature is 12 degrees to 15 degrees. But when I was born until 20 years of age, I was like, what? 40 degrees Celsius. <laughs> so that's a, that's a different uh, experience. And then um, got into the UK, the mm -hmm. um, environment was totally different. The way like people started respecting each other. That was nice. so new to me. <laughs> <laughs> so back, back there, uh, whether you are at workplace or even at home, yeah. basically, what do you mean by respect? What do you mean by privacy? What do you mean by <laughs> your concern for others? Like, even I'm like that. There is nothing like an um, um, exception for this. But um, I was like completely, totally different. Wow, this is nice. And then uh, uh, whenever someone uh, talks to me, like they start with, are you all right? Dude, I'm not a patient. You're not a doctor. Why are you even asking me, are you all right? Then I, I just thought, let me convert it back to my language. Are you all right in Tamil means nalla irkingla. That is what we used to say. So they transliterated. We generally ask, hey, Rehan, how are you? Right? We don't ask, Hi, how are you in Tamil or la local language? We ask, are you all right in local language, to be honest? So that's these are the small, small things where like so crazy and uh, crossing, road crossing. We have uh, signals for the pedestrians for the first time I saw it. And uh, I recently even came to India like um, in January this year. Uh, I still couldn't find anything such... Like, it has gone worse, actually, to be honest. I was not able to afford anything in India right now. So, back then, I was not able to afford anything because I was not earning. Yeah. Now, after after earning all these things, when I come to India, it looks like, wait, London is cheaper. It's fine. I'm <laughs> going back. Uh, so, how, anyway. how, many, how many hours, I mean, flight to uh, London from here? Direct flights are uh, super, super costly. Only Ambani's can afford. So, mm. <laughs> that's nine hours. But uh, I always go towards uh, the Middle East, Saudi, etc. And then go take another connecting flight to India. So, it will be like 13 hours. Four hours is fine for saving like uh, probably five times the cost. <laughs> So, like, right now, do you see, like, moving to big city, like, privilege for you? I mean, there's privilege because okay. there's a lot yes. of things that you can do there. I mean, like, big conference, big events, communities. What do you think? This, this is actually a good question because uh, back when I was in India, I used to think, why are these people from villages come and say, Chennai is bad. I, I'm from Chennai. I'm the I, I'm from the capital city of Tamil Nadu. People used to say that, okay, Praveen, you are in Chennai. I'm scared of Chennai. I can't come there. It is like city. It is uh, we are from villages. So what, man? Uh, we we used to call it Vandarai Varavikum Chennai, which means when you come to Chennai, we will we will make sure that you are doing good and we will take care of you in the best way possible. And when people are telling Chennai, in a, portraying Chennai in a different way, I was like literally offended. Dude, stop it. And like that. And then I came first to Leicester, not London, to the UK. So Leicester is a small, very small city. Um, it is it, it is like five kilometers up and down, let's say. I mean, like 20 kilometers or something like that. See, look at Wikipedia or something. But uh, thinking about all these things, after uh, coming to Leicester, I stayed there for two years. Or probably, yeah, two years, two years. Then I went to Newcastle upon Tyne. That was like a small city as well. So Leicester is like a town, let's say. Okay. So I was born and brought up in a town. I was born in a town called Salem in Chennai. Sorry, Ch Salem in Tamil Nadu. And then I was moved to Chennai right away after I was born. So Salem is a town. The similar way is Leicester. And then there are multiple cities in, Chennai, uh, in Tamil Nadu as well, like uh, Chennai is the most hustling and bustling city. But apart from that, we have Chennai, Trichy, uh, Coimbatore, etc. I have got lots of relatives from there. 
So you see this Trichy and Coimbatore, right? So these are like some major metro cities, but not as metro as Chennai. So from Salem, if I had been there for two years and then I went to Trichy or Coimbatore and then come to Chennai, the same feel, feel I felt here when I started with Leicester and then kind of like I was born in Leicester because that is the only place I came first. So from Leicester, I went to Newcastle upon time. Then I went to um, Cambon, Cornwall. Cornwall is like, I got a job opportunity there. So two and a half years of Newcastle. Then I went to um, one and a half years of Cornwall. So Cornwall is like Goa of uh, the UK. So it is one of the best places for tourism, but I unfortunately went there for work. So it was like kind of hell for me because obviously I can't enjoy that place because I'm working there. And uh, uh, basically uh, then I thought, okay, that's a, that's a huge story to tell because Cornwall is like completely out of Indians and no Indian food or no Indians. In case if I say, if I see any of the Indian people there, those people will be either my uh, colleagues or spouse of those colleagues. Such a huge <laughs> area deprived of Indians. Just there are like so many beaches and the HR who invited me to come there and work, she gave me a promise that she will take me to 600 beaches every single day, one beach. And she, she kept the promise. That's a good thing. But after coming there, I just realized there are only beaches, nothing else. <laughs> so coming back to uh, then after one and a half years, I came back to London. I came to London for the first time. I understood these people's feeling. Yeah. When you come okay. to a city like London or Chennai from a town or something like that, it is um, incredibly intimidating. And there are like so many things that are going on. See, if even let, let's say... Um, if you get a billion pound in front of you or billion dollars in front of you, just like that, you will be happy. There is no doubts about it. But uh, more than happiness, the happiness will be only 10%. 90% you will get a stroke and you will die. Exactly. So that's exactly what happened here with me, uh, with me and other people who were blaming Chennai. Now I don't, I, I feel sympathetic towards all of you. <laughs> so, uh, and uh I got a job there and uh, within three months, I was able to technically finish everything, but uh, I couldn't survive in that job because of the hard and fast thing, like extremely fast paced uh, um, things happening there. I, I just need some time. Just give me some time. Like give me, give me 10 minutes of break. And then, uh, no, this is not working out. I'll, I'll finish whatever. See, you are paying me. You are, yeah. you are giving me money for salary for living and other things. Okay, fine. This is what you expected out of me. I have done it. Please leave me. I, I'll leave. I'm getting away. And then uh, COVID happened. One and a half months, I was unemployed. I have everything in here and I'm unemployed. I can be kicked out anytime. And at that point of time, I got a job as well in a bank that I have my salary account in. It's Lloyd's Bank. And then one and a half years of amazingness. So, it, the whole thing was my baby. My um, I created the whole um, mortgage flow on the front. And uh, it was really a cool experience. But at one point of time, I was like feeling guilty that I'm not doing as much as how much they are paying. So I sw switched again so to JP Morgan Chase. And okay, fine. So they, gi they give you one payment and they will expect you to work for 10 payments it was like that three months four months ran away health or skeleton and then i'm here with the which group and really amazing it's been two and a half years that's my entire story <laughs> So, I mean, like, yeah, really, the COVID, like, uh, affects everything, everyone as well. So, Absolutely. I mean, how do you approach, like, staying up to date with rapidly evolving the tech landscape there? Have you heard of the thing called uh, Fireship, Web yeah, Dev yeah. Simplified, yeah. Hacker News? These are the things that give me an amazing source of information. And I connect with a lot of techie professionals and I get to learn a lot of things. So, um, that's how. And I teach people a lot. So that also helps me in learning things. And oh, wow, Rehan, you got questions like this. Okay, let me try solving it. Wow, this is something new. Oh, wow, you're working with something like this. These are the ways I learn. I have got more than 
I won't call friends like it's it's a huge family of like my networks and connections. I've got like more than fifty thousand people I know at this point. So every single person is doing something new, and I get to learn a lot of new things. So that's exactly what is my power here. Nice, great, so so interesting. So yeah, like now you've been uh, really very active in mentoring as well, right? Helping uh, programming community. But Absolutely. I want to know uh, what's your motivation back then? I mean, like how to share knowledge. I have a huge hunger. I have a huge hunger to learn things and also connect with a lot of people. That's my only two motivations. So learning comes by teaching others. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I met you as well now, so I got a new. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Even yeah. we haven't met in a person. Uh, how fun day. <laughs> if Absolutely, there's any conference yes. event. Uh, Exactly. We will do it. Do you see like uh, the biggest challenge you face in your programming career? How did you like overcome and what's that? The biggest challenge is like, uh, see, I'm a JavaScript lover. I hate Java like anything. So when that happens uh, recently, even in JavaScript world, we have something called TypeScript. I really, really hated it. My boss used to say like, Praveen, you want to, um, do you want to learn TypeScript or you want to get fired? Okay, fine. I'll learn TypeScript. The teacher who was teaching something is very, 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 very important. So finally, I found one best teacher who can teach me TypeScript. Obviously, YouTube tutorials and stuff like that. And then, wow, man, I'm in love with TypeScript. Now I will waste that two years of my life. So that is what happened. So this is the biggest challenge that I encounter anytime like whenever something that i need to learn new and it has to be taught in certain way that i love the language love the subject not hate it so thanks to my professors in the college who made me hate java thank you <laughs> so but still i, I love uh, javascript i love typescript now kind of like no no love towards typescript it's, it's just we are friends okay so that's it exactly. so javascript is my wife react is my girlfriend typescript is my friend that's it so that script yeah. is still friend zoned, but yeah, so this is the main challenge that I face. You need the right person to teach you in the right way so that you can get better. Exactly. The right mentor, uh, who willing to work with you, learning with you. That would exactly. be amazing. Yes. How do you like uh, approach learning new programming? Uh, like you said, do you having like the biggest uh challenging so how how you like uh you know uh approaching new learning programming something like that Probably. i would say if you have time try to make the same thing that you did it in your favorite programming language in a new programming language and see how things are matching up that way you would be able to learn the entirety of a complete programming language at least whatever you know in the previous thing, you will know in the new thing. So that way you can start with something and then you can figure out with Google. Don't exactly. use chat GPT, please. Don't use <laughs> chat GPT. No. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. For, for, you know, like funding your foundation is a really good if you build from scratch, not helping like from the AI yes. and things according system a hey, hey, uh, outputs can be hallucinating that is exactly. the main thing that i face now at this point so it's not a good idea to use ai at this point it is not yet mature that's what i would say exactly exactly so th what do you see like the trends in tech programming in in like uh five years ten years from now what do you see in forget your... five years ten years five months yeah. from now i think skynet will take over so follow <laughs> check out all these amazing youtube channels uh the best youtube channel in the world is like i know it is kind of like slow it's called praveen kumar Purushottaman, my youtube channel <laughs> shameless publicity exactly. yep Go ahead, check out Fireship and uh, other uh, YouTube channel who put the trends. Every day, the trends will change. Every trend will be based on the perception of individual people. So pick up your trend. You tell me what would be your trend in the next five years. I And don't wait for five years. I think after five years, there could be nothing that is right now. 
will be there in in the next five years. That is how the whole paradigm is changing. Probably we will not even use computers. There will be no Apple. There will be no Windows. There could be something like Kundos. Who knows? <laughs> It okay. is that fast. Yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> exactly. So it's just be prepared. Don't think about the future. We mm-hmm. don't even know if we will be alive tomorrow. So be in the present. Look at what are the trends that are right now currently yeah. going amazing. So probably Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, uh, Java, .NET. Even though I hate these two guys, but still they are on the top five. So go ahead, learn these things if you want real money. That's it. Done. <laughs> so so there will be there will be, there will be so many yeah. boomers who keep saying like, oh, you know <laughs> JavaScript? Yeah. You don't know Opal? Boomers, Then you're yeah. not. I don't exactly. care, dude. I'm getting a million pound. I will just stick with JavaScript. You go big. Those people are literally boomers. I have yeah. seen a lot of comments behind, like under my, um, if I say like JavaScript is amazing. I'm a JavaScript developer. About One the AD. PHP, PHP. A PHP is my ex girlfriend. <laughs> Please, he's good. He's good. I will still be in touch with her, but we'll see later. <laughs> PHP powers almost like ninety percent of all the. Com- computers and the like all the web servers i don't know what is the hate about php because i mean to know php to learn it you need a special knowledge i have it i'm thank you i'm thankful exactly <laughs> so those those php haters yeah keep hating i'll keep dating and then i'll keep making money it's not yeah. about making money it's yeah. about being nice. happy after this it's like yeah. only your peace of mind matters only your happiness matters exactly yeah this has been fun <laughs> the chat so uh, back so, to to london uh, to london so do you see like there is a like tech winter or something like off there no we are out of, <laughs> we are out of all the recession and all those okay. see whatever it is if you have the right skills recession yeah. is shit that's it like uh, recession or obsession or confusion nothing will come to you If you have, if you are confident with your work, and if see, I don't understand why. So, I have been talking to so many people, young people who are coming here to pursue their masters, masters in data science, masters in data analytics, masters in cyber security. But the first question they are asking is, where can I find a restaurant job? Where can I find the um, parcel packing job? Where can I find the plate cleaning job, dude? Do you want to work for eight pounds an hour or eighty pounds an hour? Do you want to work in a rest APA or you want to work in restaurants? Do you want to create NPM packages or you want to package something and give it to others? Your choice. I don't understand. They have such a huge. Basically, they are coming with gemstones and they are begging for money. <laughs> they are not using the gem gemstones straightly. Exactly. I don't know what to say. Exactly. Please use your brain. <laughs> folks who are coming to the UK, especially Indian students, don't go for all these cash and hand jobs. You have talent. You are coming here. Please exactly. make use of that talent. Make money out of that. Exactly. Exactly. So because these people, if they if they make money out of their talents, they can also put that in your in their resume, and they will become more employable. If they go ahead and do the plate cleaning and uh, parcel packing jobs, they can't. They are wasting time, basically. And for like, they are literally wasting everything. They are wasting time. They are wasting efforts. They are wasting money. So, um, one hour of parcel packing will give them ten pounds, but one hour of PHP writing will give them even PHP writing. Even PHP writing will give them thirty-five pounds. If they are doing JavaScript, forty-five pounds. If they are doing data science, they will be getting hundred pounds. It's their choice, their life, their rules. You can only yeah. say that. <laughs> So yeah, like, uh, what's your next achievement that you want to, as well, to achieve as well for your? So next? in case if if there is a good way that I can tell these people what best you can do. See, I lost a lot of things as well in life. Okay. So if I had a time machine, I would do everything ten years before totally different in a different way. So I wish someone will pick up my fear, my. Uh, um, how should i say this my wavelength and do something amazing they will definitely be better better than the best than me i want to see someone who is worse than me to become the better person than me i just want to see that transition in front of my eyes but yeah uh, it's uh, 
it's really tough that i couldn't find anyone at this point so i'm, I'm just feeling a bit sad like everyone wants to do um like sub stranded work just for subsistence i just want to live that's it i don't want to achieve something that's what i feel is that nice which is, which i which makes me feel so bad that's enjoy it. yeah enjoy like enjoy life work life enjoy process. they're not doing enjoying the life as well dude <laughs> i'm enjoying anything yeah. dude Exactly. If you get if you get ten pounds versus if you get hundred pounds, who will have the ultimate enjoyment? Tell me. And less less work. Yeah. So basically, let's consider the parcel packing work or restaurant cleaning work, plate cleaning work versus PHP writing work. I'm just telling telling PHP for an example. A lot of people are coming as machine learning enthusiasts, artificial intelligence, um, and data scientists. Okay, let's take that work versus this one. So parcel packing or plate cleaning. you have to put your body mind and a lot of efforts to physically to do things whereas here you just need to type in a few lines of code and you are done for this one hour you will get 8 pounds for this you will get 100 pounds or for this one hour you get 10 pounds you will get 100 pounds for this there are like anyone can do it for this only you can do it for this you will become tired you can't concentrate on anything for this you have the ultimate freedom creativity you can actually suggest something you can make money out of that as well for this you cannot put it in your cv or resume for this you can put it in cv resume you can get more networks who can help you get bigger and bigger jobs yeah why i am not sure why they are not considering that <laughs> yeah it's nice nice interesting interesting yeah really really cool it's been really really good chat with you Thank you so much. I mean, uh, flying flies. We also, as we do, connect with me on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, so I'm so, up for it. Yeah, where can follow uh, your work or uh, your we connect with you online? Where where can people? Yeah. So yeah, everything is in the description. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe we can do another episode if we. How many of you want part two? It's exactly. <laughs> You can comment let's, below. Let's, let's do, uh, put the comment and let's do a part as well. Thank you so much, Prapin Kumar. Thank you for Thank joining you. this chat. Really enjoying talking with you. It's very inspiring. You're an amazing host. Man. Very inspiring. So maybe <laughs> people, listener out there, can learn from this story and yeah, making inspiring from this. Yes. All right. So that's it. Our episode today. Thank you. For listening, see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.